Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and today we're taking a look at the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Some tips and tricks for how to get the most out of it and generally just how to use the computer if you're new. So at the beginning of the video we're going to have some more beginner tips just how to use this machine and then we'll get into more interesting and more fun tips as well including some of the top accessories that you can get for this computer and this video is sponsored by Phone Trans Software by iMobi. So on the computer, there's basically three ways of moving around the computer. You can use the mouse and your keyboard using keyboard shortcuts such as command and tab to get through this menu bar. Then you've got your menu bar up top up here and you can see you have, uh, you can get to your system information and your system preferences, so your settings right here as well as the app store. And then if you ever need to force quit an application because it's not responding, you can click force quit there and then you have all your other settings for sleeping, restarting, shutting down, and more. And then whatever app you are in, you're going to have more settings there as well up top. And then if you go to the top right hand of your menu bar, you have new settings for the new operating system with this Mac. And here you have access to this little button, which is Control Center. And Control Center gives you quick access to basically all of the commands and controls you need, such as display, sound, Wi-Fi, and more. But what's cool about this is that you can drag any of these settings you want right into your notification center or your menu bar, I should say, and you can drag that right there. This part of the menu bar also gives you quick access to different applications. For instance, this one right here is for Adobe and over here, this is a little icon from my screen recording. So if I click this, it will end this screen. And over here, you also have your time and date and then your notification center. And you can see what this looks like here. And you can add widgets as well. You scroll to the very bottom where it says edit widgets and you can add more or fewer widgets there and you can see a whole list of ones that you can choose from. Now you can also get to this menu by swiping over on your trackpad with two fingers from the right. So from two fingers from the right, you can swipe over to get to your notification center, which is nice as well. Now a cool setting that is found over here is something that's taken from iOS. So if you do a right click on a notification, you can change how that notification is handled in the future. So now you can do a setting called deliver quietly, and this means that it'll go straight to notification center without popping on your screen, or you can completely turn off notifications for that particular app right from notification center. So this is a great way to quickly customize your notifications. In the system preferences, which you can get to by typing in settings or going to the settings app in your dock and there's a variety of other ways as well. But in here there's something called hot corners as well as a screensaver, which I don't think many people actually use, but I love using hot corners. So if you go into your desktop and screensaver settings, and then you go down to the bottom right and you click hot corners, here this will allow you to activate these four corners of your device with different actions. So for me, I have the top right set to desktop. So when I drag my mouse to the top right, it clears out all my applications and it reveals my desktop so I can find something that's quickly on my desktop. You could also have it do put display to sleep. So if I were to drag it to the bottom right hand corner, it's just going to put my display to sleep. You can also do start screensaver. So my bottom left will start screensaver. So if I want just a nice visual on my Mac, I can do that. And you can see, of course, it is starting this screensaver now. And if I move my mouse, it will undo that. And here you can also change your desktop wallpaper in these same settings from Apple's or from one of the folders of your own. And you can click the plus button down here in the bottom left and choose your own images. Now, if you want even more good wallpapers, idownloadblog.com has a wallpaper section, which has tons of awesome wallpapers that you can choose from, including especially optimized for the Mac. Now on all of the M1 computers, there are just two USB-C ports as well as a headphone jack. So you can see there are two USB-C ports over here and then your headphone jack over here. Now with this USB-C port, you can't really use anything with it that isn't USB-C, obviously. So you're gonna need a USB-C cable. So you can attach things such as external SSDs and more that use USB-C. Then you can also attach separate hubs such as this one that connects to it and then gives you access to USB, an HDMI, an SD card, and more. I'll leave links to different adapters down in the description. Now, because it is USB-C, it does mean you can get slightly quicker charging to your different devices. So for instance, if you have an iPhone 11 or newer phone, 
it comes with a USB-C to lightning cable. So you can quickly connect and charge your newer iPhones with this. Then you could also buy separately these cables and they also make them for Apple Watch and you can also use it to charge your iPad and more. So this is a great way to quickly charge and just keep up to date all of your different iOS and even Android phones. So if you have an Android phone, you can connect via USB-C and charge it as well. Now, speaking of connecting your iPhone to your Mac, if you want to make sure you always have your iPhone's data both secured and backed up, or if you ever need to transfer data to a new device, PhoneTrans is a fantastic and simple tool for your needs, and they are the sponsor of this episode. So PhoneTrans bridges the gap between Android and iOS and can quickly and easily transfer your content from one operating system to another, and you can choose exactly what files you want and what files you don't want to be transferred, Within a click of a button, they can go from one device to another or from your phone to your computer or vice versa. The software doesn't really require any technical knowledge from your end and works with over 32 types of files and data from different locations such as iCloud, Google, iTunes, and more. You can check it out for free with the link in the description. Now in the box of this computer, you do get the wall charger as well as a USB-C cable and some stickers and that's pretty much it. The stickers do match the color of your computer though, so that's pretty cool. If you get the gold one, you'll get some nice gold stickers. Now because this computer does use USB-C and because it does use a slightly lower powered battery than a 15 inch MacBook Pro, for instance, uh, you can use external batteries to power this. So if you have something like this anchor battery that plugs directly into the wall, but it's also a battery inside that you can unplug and keep charging your devices, you can charge up your computer on the go with an accessory such as this, which is pretty cool. Uh, and of course, I'll leave different ones linked down in the description if you wanna check any of these products out. Now, other accessories that I like for this computer, this is the mouse I've been using lately. It is the Logitech MX Anywhere 3 mouse. It's super portable and versatile. It has buttons on the side and a scroll wheel for horizontal as well as vertical scrolling. And it just has a really nice shape and size. These are Apple's new AirPods Max, so of course you can use AirPods with this computer. I don't recommend these headphones, they're just way too expensive. I'd recommend the normal AirPods. And then I've also been using Nomad's new leather mouse pad, which is beautiful and just super nice material. And I usually don't use mouse pads, but then whenever I get one, I always love it just because it does really enhance the mouse experience a lot. So this is great. And then Nomad also just came out with a beautiful new leather sleeve that I've been checking out and that's really great. It's definitely pricey, but if you want a really premium leather magnetic sleeve for your MacBook Air or MacBook Pro M1, Nomad does make a great one. And of course, links down in the description. And then if you wanna boost your storage on your computer, you don't have to go through Apple. You can get a variety of different USB-C SSDs. I have two here, one from SanDisk, one from Western Digital. And there's actually a lot of different ones out there and they're super nice because they're small, they're portable, but they're extremely fast and extremely reliable. And now they're getting actually pretty affordable. So I do recommend these if you wanna to upgrade to storage on your computer at any point. Next, so if we go into system preferences, this is a setting that I like to do personally. So let's go into Touch ID. I like to turn off password autofill down here because as it is by default, if you have password autofill, every time that your computer wants to autofill a password, it's gonna make you put in uh, your fingerprint. If you turn this off, you'll no longer have to put in your fingerprint every time that you go to type in a passcode or have it autofill a passcode. Next is a setting that I really like to do. So if you go into accessibility and then you go down to pointer control and trackpad options, I like to turn on enable dragging with three finger drag right here. So with this turned on, this allows you to drag around windows with just a three finger hold, a three finger gesture, you don't have to click at all. So normally you'd have to click and then drag, but with a three finger drag, I find it just to be quicker and more convenient once you get used to that to drag around with three fingers. So I do like that setting to be turned on. There are new commands and shortcuts on the function row on this computer. So up top we have the spotlight search, dictation and do not disturb, which I'm a big fan of. So do not disturb simply turns do not disturb on and off on your computer and you can adjust how you want do not disturb to work going into your notification preferences and the do not disturb mode, including automatically turning it on during certain times of the day. 
Spotlight search very simply brings up your spotlight search so you can search things such as Safari, uh, Wikipedia, your files, do quick calculations and more. Uh, but you can also do command space to get into here or click the spotlight button in the menu bar. So there's a lot of ways to get to spotlight. And then finally, dictation is simply when you are in a text field, you can use dictation to speak your text instead of typing it. Now also up top, this power button, of course, acts as touch ID, but if you also just wanna leave your computer and lock it, you just press the power button once and your computer will be locked and someone's going to need to enter in the passcode to get into it. On the bottom left of the keyboard is the function button, but it also doubles as an emoji button. So if you click this while you're typing, it'll bring up the full emoji drawer, and then you can also search through that. Now, if for some reason you don't wanna click the emoji button, you can also do control command space, and that will pull up the emoji drawer as well, and you can still search through that as well. Now, a really cool shortcut is the ability to quickly launch into specific settings by clicking option and then the corresponding function row key. So if you wanna go into your display settings, you do option, and brightness, and that will launch the display settings. We'll get out of that. If I wanted to go into volume settings or audio settings, I do option and then any of the volume buttons. And then if I wanted to go into mission control settings, I can do that too. It doesn't work with music or do not disturb or dictation or spotlight search, but if you wanna get into your display settings, you can do that with these buttons. Or if you wanna get into your audio or your mission control settings, you can very quickly do that from there, which is great. Now also up top, this power button of course acts as touch ID, but if you also just wanna leave your computer and lock it, you just press the power button once and your computer will be locked and someone's going to need to enter in the passcode to get into it. Next, in Safari, there's actually new ways of customizing it now. So if you go down to the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little gear icon. And if you click on that, it'll give you options. You can see what is included on the homepage and what is not. So I can turn favorites on and off, reading list on and off, and also if I want a background image or not. And you can choose from Apple's different background images down here, but you can also add your own. And that's just a nice way to customize your home screen. Now next, there's a lot of applications that do support the M1 chip specifically on this computer. So for instance, Chrome, if you go to download it, you'll see two options. And one is going to be for Intel browsers and one is going to be for M1 browsers or M1 computers. You can see the options here for Mac with Intel chip or Mac with Apple chip, and you can choose which one is you, and that allows you to get the right software. And this is also true for other programs and applications that allow you to choose between Intel and Mac or Apple chip or M1 chip. So make sure you choose the Apple chip or M1 chip if you ever get presented with those options. Now, if you go into the App Store, you can see apps that are specifically designed for the M1 chip, and these are gonna work really well with this computer, such as Lightroom and Affinity Photo and more. So you can see what an app that is designed for this computer can really do, and including Final Cut Pro, which I use. Now, a new feature of this Mac is actually the ability to download applications that are made for iPhone and iPad to this computer. So if I search for something, I can see Mac apps, but then I can also see iPhone and iPad apps. And if I go into here, it's going to give me a bunch of different apps for the iPhone and iPad that I can actually download on the Mac, which is pretty cool. Now, a lot of popular ones such as Instagram and Facebook are not available on here, maybe in the future, maybe not. So those are the tips and tricks that I have for using your M1 Mac between the USB-C ports and the new control center and using hot corners and downloading apps specifically for this computer. It's all great and it's all there. And let me know if you have any other comments down below. Make sure to check out Phone Trans with the link in the description.